What you can see here is an inflatable robot arm that picks up an apple and hands it over to me. I'm sure many of you are wondering, what do you need an inflatable robot arm for? And why would somebody spend four years of his PhD to develop a system that might seem like hot air? Our motivation and inspiration is the human arm which is an extremely versatile manipulator that we use daily to accomplish a variety of different tasks. Before arriving here at this event, we all probably picked up our phones, put on our coats and opened a few doors. Because the human arm is so useful for so many things, roboticists have always dreamed of replicating it. And with quite some success, robot arms are used to support humans in tedious tasks where they repeat the same movement thousands of times when assembling cars, for example. But imagine working side by side with a heavy robotic manipulator. What if the robot accidentally hits you? Wouldn't that be dangerous? In fact, it is. And that's the reason why these robots are often put into cages, well separated from humans. But why is there a risk of injury for humans when interacting with a rigid robot? To answer this question, let's imagine a very different object. Let's think of an inflated balloon. If I tell you that you might get hit by a balloon, you probably wouldn't be scared at all, right? So why does a balloon seem way less dangerous than a moving piece of metal? Probably because on the one hand, the balloon is flexible and soft, which means it can adapt to its environment. On the other hand, it's inflatable, so there is almost no added weight because it's only air. What if we imagine a robot arm that is designed like a balloon, a system that can simply not harm us? That's exactly what we have developed at ETH Zurich, an inflatable robot arm designed to be safe. It has inflatable links that only consist of fabric and air. And it has three of these bellows that can be inflated and act like muscles to move the upper link. This robot can bump into a person without causing any danger because it's flexible, soft and lightweight. Now, besides being safe, our robot needs to master two skills so that it can also be useful to support humans. The first skill is sensing the robot arm needs to know its own orientation. What does that mean exactly? To find out, let's do a simple experiment. Let's touch our nose with our index finger. Can you do that? That's easy, right? If you can't, you probably shouldn't drive home tonight. Let's try it again, but this time with your eyes closed. It still works. So this means we don't need the visual feedback from our eyes to know the orientation of our arm. Instead, we use the stream of sensory information from our muscles and tendons, which we interpret unconsciously in the moment and that tells us the orientation of our own arm. But how can we give similar capability to our inflatable robot arm? Since it's all soft, we cannot use standard sensors like those used in rigid robots. Instead, we have developed the idea of placing small cameras inside the robotic arm. Cameras are cheap and they provide lots of information. In the case of the robot arm, three internal cameras provide a stream of camera images of the inflating bellows, similar to the stream of information from our muscles. And by using techniques from artificial intelligence, we can interpret these camera images to determine the orientation of the robot arm. Now, the second skill our robot needs to master is control, or in other words, how to move accurately. We know exactly how to do this with a rigid robot, but it's much harder to do it with a soft robot 
because the materials can deform and their behavior might even change over time. So let's take again inspiration from a similar system that we know very well and that is partially soft. The human arm can master very challenging tasks, such as moving a full glass of water or catching a ball. But as children, we had to learn these things and build up the required experience. With our inflatable robot arm, we use a mathematical model that replaces this experience and that tells us how to move the robot arm. But like our memory, that might fade over time. Our mathematical model might not always match with reality. Therefore, we detect when the real robot behaves differently and we adjust our prediction. This approach allows us to move the robot arm accurately and we could demonstrate that it's even possible to catch a ball with the inflatable robot arm, as you can see in this video. To catch the ball, the robot has to move quickly, but still be accurate at the same time, both of which are important when we need the robot to support us in real-world applications. By rethinking the design of robots, we can make them safer for humans to come into contact with. Systems like our prototype could work hand-in-hand -hand with humans in areas such as logistics, farming or healthcare. Soft robots could help us, for example, in logistics to handle the increasing number of postal parcels. Or in farming, they could support workers during harvesting tasks, such as fruit picking. And in healthcare, the robot could assist an impaired patient and help him to be more independent. All these applications illustrate that there is enormous potential when robots and humans can closely collaborate. But the design is not limited to systems that look like our prototype. We are just starting to explore a huge design space using all kinds of soft materials for applications we haven't even imagined yet. And someday, I'm convinced, we will think of robots as a helping hand that we like to bump into. Thank you very much.